What's Ooh. up, ladies and gentlemen? Is it late? Is it late? What's up? What's up, everybody? What's up? Today, we have a special guest on the show. We have the one, the only, Sean Burrow. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Sean Burrow, a.k.a. Starlight City Project. And, uh, and, of course, you have Urban Johnson, uh, a.k.a. Game on Cloud 9, and Nico, a.k.a. Chief N, your host for the day. Okay. So. Yeah, I know, I, I know the way I kind of assembled this. I know if people are watching the live stream right now, the way that the uh, everything came in was kind of weird. I'm not even going to lie. Because <laughs> I actually pulled up the uh, the wrong screen at the wrong time. But anyway, let's just jump into this. Oh, um, I'm so, all right. I, I understand everyone. We've been having some weird it technical issues. My internet, for whatever reason, went out. So and you're sitting upside I, down, actually. Let me fix that. Upside down, lovely. Yes. Thanks. So all kind of crazy this today. So we uh <laughs> raw live action. Here it is. So shine story series R I L persona. Yep, that's the name of the series. Well, it's it's, it's pronounced R L persona. Um, RL. Yeah, uh, L like the the Italian word for the. It's uh, the name's kind of like a. It, it's kind of like a like a joke because uh, the first letter is R, which stands for the main character Raid. Um, right. The L is it's the Italian word for the, and then Persona is the the Latin word for mask. So it, it's basically saying Raid the mask, which is kind of like one of the themes of the series, like masks and personalities and what lurks behind them you know raid the mask <laughs> oh <Okay>. identity <laughs> all about identity that's i can tell like you know especially when you see you, you have know, to like make sure that everyone you know, else first, um, can even you know, grasp a as far as you know percentage of that been, vision you know, as far no as one will that, ever uh, be able to see point, he your still doesn't exact know identity i haven't vision. read anything that's impossible because of course it's what's in your head even if you're you're doing both the art oh he doesn't know anything so no one can see your exact vision 100%. that's the fun part that's what i like because it like uh, for us to be able to do basically that, puts like the real. reader but in his shoe so the reader finds out everything um and of course as he does so it you know it, i wanted like people to like be immersed to be in the experience when they're reading it different so that was one of the goals that i wanted like where just like when you're reading it you feel the same way as he is you know and let's say for example a cookbook but just because you're reading right. the ingredients doesn't mean it's going to... Yeah, that do get, that do get some of them vibes, especially some a lot of his confusions. Or, um, um, even the same mm -hmm. um, so, uh, texture what, as maybe a What would you, uh, you know, for the audience, uh, get, why don't you go ahead and first give a brief summary of your story for those sure. that not know what it's about. Yeah, no problem. Um, well, again, the story is called R. L. Persona. Um... Basically, it takes place in like a post-apocalyptic future, mm -hmm. and it's about a teenager who his code name is named Raid, and he wakes up inside this black magic powered suit of armor, and uh, he wakes up with amnesia. He doesn't know what's going on. And he basically finds himself in the middle of this like deadly like big time mission um, for the faction that he works for, um, and the mission is basically going to set the course for this big global war that his faction and another side is involved in and basically he he's thrown into the middle of everything he doesn't know what's going on and um things just basically go from there um the target audience is about i, I guess it's like ages 17 and up um it's more of like for the adult swim crowd if you know what i mean um oh yeah oh, <laughs> People that like to watch anime on Saturday nights, stuff like that. Because, um, you know, it's got, like, violence in it, you know. And it's basically, like, the way we um, we put it together. Uh, it, it's kind of like a cartoon already on the page. But, um, yeah, so it's got, like, a lot of, like, you know, gore. People call it gore. I don't really look at it like that. But, um, and it's got, like, you know, some foul language and adult situations but nothing too crazy like i said it's for the like adult swim crowd so 
ages 17 and up. Um, I'm the writer on it. I'm the writer and creator of the series. Like, And um, I work with two people on the main portion of the series. Uh, the artist is J.M. Valenzuela. And the colorer and letterer is Ludwig Sacramento. Okay. So do you see this being on Tsunami one day? Uh, I would love it. I, I'd actually love for it to be on Netflix, to be honest with you. But that'd be cool, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know what you mean. That's definitely one of the Netflix goals. Doing extremely well. So, I mean, it would make you know. Since yeah. I guess I, I was only saying that like the tsunami part because I'm like just for nostalgia purposes since uh, we all grew, <laughs> grown up and <laughs> all the uh, those old tsunami shows is like a big influence on like just you know everything that 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 I've been doing with Il Persona. So okay, so then what what would you say is if you had to pick one of the tsunami shows, what probably had the most effect on you creating this? Uh, Gundam Wing Ooh. is definitely one that um, and that's going that's going ways back, I know, but um, oh, no. that's definitely like one of my like biggest influences, just because of like the it was a certain like rawness to the series, like it had like political intrigue. The the main characters were basically on one side they could you know they could be called terrorists on the other side they could be freedom fighters you know for i think that for their colony or whatever that was a big influence um well yeah as far as tsunami shows gundam wing is probably the biggest influence and then you know i could probably say <laughs> dragon ball z but I, I was watching dragon ball z even i was watching the japanese like subtitle version of dragon ball z before it came on tsunami um uh I guess like Yu Yu Hakusho. You remember that show? Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. All these ones that you're naming, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, yeah, like that. That was uh, an influence just on your like the project. Again, is your baby the so supernatural you sure aspect of it? Um, to but yeah, I, I would say those shows time, in particular are the, the ones that really currently are. Toonami was a you big may influence. Have your, I got, you may wait a little bit. I got longer, so many other influences though. You're ready to tell that story. Maybe it's a very deep topic that you're going to touch on and if it uh, is a very really deep topic and you yeah i mean on... like well american comics like like batman spider-man um hmm the matrix was a a big influence just it it, it i, I wouldn't say it influenced like work. the story all, but it definitely was an influence like work. as it translates to just like the vibe of it that that, that always stood out to me most, um so just make sure hmm. that you make it count and you don't but uh i mean other anyway, than that guys, mainly like i'm a big mega and anime fan so it's like comment section um, that please go that ahead part and of the, the so that part like of the go uh, ahead and put a thumbs up uh, the fandom Share that basically influences friends, a lot of what I do um, and join Shining Otaku by hitting subscribe anyway guys so, um, I hope you guys have a oh, wonderful wait, day and see you later RPGs Japanese RPGs like if you read uh, like the story like a lot of that is like a lot of that comes from me like a lot of those ideas I got from like just playing like Final Fantasy or something I and I get an mean. idea like yo. <laughs> See, I know what you mean. That you know what this guy Nico, he he's he could talk to you about Final Fantasy all day. Cause me and I mean this is gonna sound pretty bad. I've never played a Final Fantasy. You know I know. Oh. Other than I've never played one, but I, I'm like I know people were loving it when what the Final Fantasy 15 just came out or whatnot. And, I mean. I yeah, know. I mean. But I mean, there's other like, you know, RPGs too. But you're not you're not a big RPG guy in general, then. Oh, I guess not. Not really. I'm trying to think of what yeah. RPGs do I play? Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, probably just Naruto-based ones, really. Uh, yeah, well, hey, that counts too, though. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, but, that yeah. was a good influence, too, like, out of recent... Well, it's not recent, but that series, really, I like the writing for, I guess, like, about... <sighs> 75 percent of that series like naruto that was a really like a, a an influence just like the writing like the way the the author approached certain things yeah, i did appreciate that mm. yeah kishimoto was pretty he, he was pretty good a lot of people hated the ending i i thought that they were like kind of dragging it out for money but <laughs> you know how that goes oh you know hey i agree 
the uh I feel like Bleach did didn't get the right ending. I mean I like Bleach. Oh but... yeah. Ooh. I'm like, let's not even get into, you know, I feel like Bach uh-huh. or whatever. I'm like, okay, I could. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how do you feel about that? I, I got to ask you, like, straight up. The the ending for Bleach? Yeah, like, what's your, yeah. what's your overall I thought problem? that he got, well, I thought, because the one thing, uh, I, don't, I don't like to be really critical like other authors, because everybody's got their own style, you know, but I thought that uh, Kubo, he, his, uh, his style, like, his pacing was like, he would tend to drag things out a little bit. And, like, a lot of his chapters are, like, really action-based. So, it, like, it, it was just, like, a weird pacing to it. So, when he finally got towards the end, I think that they forced him to, like, end it, like, abruptly. And it kind of messed the ending up, so. <laughs> oh, I can tell he yeah, he definitely ended it. I mean, because if it didn't, I mean, honestly, like, if you look at, like, the character, like, how a lot of the other characters, aside from, like, Bach, how they ended up getting killed off, like, what, Hashwald? Uh, how it, oh, yeah. he didn't use his final holy form <laughs> with Bach. I don't understand how this arrow basically was like a, was a deuce ex machina or whatever, how basically, you know, just that arrow was able to suppress yeah. his powers. And out of nowhere, I'm like, we never heard about this arrow, never was foreshadowed or anything. And then on top of that, then you have Ichigo just freaking cut him like it's nobody's business. And I'm like, okay, what happened to predicting everything? Even if you're suppressing his powers, like this dude should have easily had like uh, Yamato's Bankai. Because he still had yeah. it. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> that was the editors, I guess, saying that you know he had to wrap it up. But you know, it is what it is. But that I, that series too, I, I did like that series. I, I wouldn't say it was like an influence on what I'm doing, but I was just a fan of the series. The art was like real, especially towards like the middle to later half. Like his character designs just got really good. Okay. Uh, I agree. Yeah. Uh, definitely uh, had the most favorable uh, art style uh, at, mm-hmm. at the time for me as well. <laughs> How do you feel about Tokyo Ghoul? That's actually my favorite manga right now. That's what I'm talking about. See, I, have, I actually I... read the manga. I, have a, I, I, I may have watched like one episode of the series. That uh-huh. I, I've read the manga. Like I, I haven't even sat down to watch the series because I heard that the series and the manga don't match up so i didn't want to i don't want to ruin the experience you know i mean this is halfway accurate i mean the, the season one it does follow up uh, most of the manga but it's just season two after that it's a good yeah time. i've been anime i'll avoid that what you know you gotta anyone... read the manga i'm telling you <laughs> the soundtrack definitely fits the tone of the story so if there was any reason you would ever try out the anime just solely before that soundtrack in my opinion because when you're reading the manga with that soundtrack in your head oh man it gets extra realistic and just emotional and <sighs> well, I I'm I'm definitely check it out but you know i'm the one who put you up on tokyo gold nico just saying Yes, I, it, you know how disheartening it is that this this man got me up on Tokyo Ghoul and won't read the manga. You got to read the manga. It, I come am, on, I come on. I read a little bit of it, but I'm like I haven't like sat down and like went through everything. When you, because it's two parts, it's Tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul Re, and it gets crazier like one chapter after the other. Like once you get to the end of Tokyo Ghoul, you're like, what? Oh, I know about these spoilers. Ian told me about it, so yeah, I'm not gonna spoil it, yeah. but you know, but <sighs> the ending of Tokyo Ghoul was crazy. The real, the real ending. <laughs> yeah, there's a uh, the the way season two left off. It there's no, it's literally little way they could they could hope to recover from that. They had to just reboot the series or something, uh, or, uh, or reboot second season or something. They they just say you need to say forget season two and just pick it up where they left off because that that series needs an anime. So are, are there any characters from Tokyo Ghoul that you feel like have influenced your I guess characterization of any characters and and um, you know mm. RL uh, persona? None right now because um, I actually was so I actually. Because right now, what we have out is probably one and a half volumes worth of content. And I'm already writing the fifth book right now. 
Um, so no one, no one yet uh, from Tokyo Ghoul really influenced it, but uh, Ken Kaneki's character, especially when he first, um, the, the early version of his character, that really like, it, it captured my attention because he was a little bit different. You know, he, you know, chill guy, he liked to read books and stuff like that. And then, you know, he just has like this really bad day and his life just gets turned upside down. Like that, mm -hmm. that's like a really, really good engaging character, but nobody from Tokyo Ghoul, I could say influenced anybody in the series. Not yet, so, but, you know. What would you say still if early. Sui Ishida came up to you and he said he wanted to do a crossover with you? I'd do it, hell. <laughs> how would you see it going, though? That's, that's the real question. What, how would you... I, what would you I don't know, because... Well, because... Mine is more, like, action fantasy with sci-fi elements in it. His is more, like, horror fantasy. Action horror fantasy, I'd say, because they got battles and stuff in there, but... Um, I don't know. I mean, you see mashups all the time, so <laughs> we figure it out. Oh, yeah, I, I've seen, um, what was it? Uh, wasn't there one time that they did Fairy Tale and, uh, oh, Parasite? I thought that was the weirdest one. Just yeah, weird. yeah, I, I think I saw that. I think I saw that. And that's what I'm saying. Like, if you could take something like Parasite, which is like way left field from, from what, what Fairy Tale is, and, and make it come together, you could do anything. <laughs> It's true. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, it, I mean, outside of the outside of RL Persona, uh, mm -hmm. what what other projects are you working on, if any? Well, well, yeah. I mean, El, El Persona takes up like and I call it El Persona too because that was the original name, but I decided to like put the R in front of it, um, like somewhere around down the line because i didn't i didn't want any problems with the persona people because you, you're familiar with the video games mm -hmm. and stuff yeah yeah because sometimes like it, I, i've done two conventions so far and like at both of them i got the question hey is this like the persona series and i'm like no no it's no. totally different series <laughs> but it, it's cool i mean shoot anybody taking an interest you know that's that's the main thing but um El Persona is taking up basically like ninety nine percent of my time. I have another series that I'm, you know, writing in the background, like developing it. Um, I don't have like a, a working title for it, but it's gonna be because I, I I love fantasy stories, so uh, mm. it's gonna be in the realm of like fantasy, but it's gonna be mystery fantasy, like um, actual <laughs> crime solving, I guess detective stuff in like a fantasy setting uh, i'll put it like that uh, what brought that uh, idea about um one day i was just like you know you ever uh, see the show true detective true detective oh yeah it's a uh... yeah i don't know yeah. look i don't play, i don't i don't blame you a lot of tv's crap but uh True Detective was like this show on HBO. It was like a detective, like anthology series or whatever. But and it's not anything from the show that made me want to do it. But I was just like, yo, like, what if I just combine like a fantasy like setting or even a steampunk fantasy setting with like actual mystery and some type of way, you know, some type of case solving things like that. So that's what I'm developing now. And, so far, it's basically going to start two female protagonists, and um, I'm just going there. But right now, I'm just really developing it. Like, I got, like, the general idea down, but, you know, with me, I like to really take my time before even getting stuff drawn up. Like, like with, like, R.L. Persona, it was, like, years of, like, me, like, taking the story, rewriting it, rewriting it, until I got to the point where I was like, you know what, I'm actually going to get this published. So, and then, and that was like a year process, like not year process, but like years worth of like building up to it. So, but I'm going to do this one, the, the other series that I'm talking about, I'm probably going to put that out sometime in the next like year or two, try to get that done. Cause I, I feel a little bit more confident in my writing to just like put more stuff out now. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's a, uh, 
that's what you're interested to know because um, you know a lot. I know quite a bit of people uh, get into you know, writing stories, or I mean, more notably, or more that I've noticed in the comic industry is that uh, they'll try to do multiple. So a lot, some of them actually do try to do multiple stories on the get go, and uh, mm-hmm. really really had enough experience as you know, writing a solo story and really fleshing it out. And they've had plenty of it where it came where there was plenty of like tropes and um, you know, uh, instances in a in plot where uh, you know, it, was just, it was just kind of mellowed out and uh, didn't really hype up the climax enough. And then, and then, even, then you know, some of them have issues with storyboarding and where, uh, where you know, you, you lay it out for what you want for your, you know, your artist or if you are the artist where you want to basically put certain content and if you haven't really laid it out to them where you know the the page basically flows to where you can to where the reader can definitely tell where the, what the uh, main what the uh, what the main point of that page is or or basically be you know feel inclined to basically turn the page and basically leaving off the leaving off the last panel with somewhat of a somewhat of a cliffhanger for that page if you will mm-hmm. but you know yeah, them. like and don't delve out to gain that experience and think they can just put out multiple series. So I'm glad you you got to basically work on our persona, persona long enough to and you know gain that experience and uh, con- really I, confidence to work on. Yeah, I wanted to just do it right. You know, it, it, this is something that I, I've wanted to do like basically my entire life. So it's like I didn't want to do it until I had like. The resources to to push it and also i didn't want to do it until i perfected my writing enough to where i was confident even like in the earlier chapters uh, the 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 earlier like the the first volume of ill person we only have one volume like in stores but we have like six single issues out but um mm-hmm. even that like i wouldn't say i would go back and rewrite it but I, like i feel like i've matured like in my writing style, the more I write, the better I get. So it's like, I'm, I'm just, I, I think that um, trying to tackle multiple series at once, you have to be really, either really, really good or your confidence needs to be sky high with what you're putting out. Because oh, yeah. I would never want to put something out there that I didn't give 150 to 200% of my like mental focus on, you know, so... That's why, like, the other series that I'm, you know, talking to you guys briefly about that, it, it'll be out when it's ready, but I, I don't think it would take as long as it took me to put together, like, oh, Persona, so. Okay. And, um, uh, point you mentioned before that I want to, uh, touch on, the, uh, oh, yeah, so, so what are your thoughts on, uh, on certain writers that, May, that may feel inclined to basically reboot their entire stories. You know, let's say they they kicked it off. Maybe they got two volumes in, or basically like ten chapters. Let's say they got ten chapters in, where like ah, I don't know, I'm just not feeling it. Or maybe they're halfway through their arc and they feel like um, how the series isn't going away, and you know, I really wanted to, and they decided mm. really to reboot it. Um. That, uh, me personally, I wouldn't do that. Um, if you develop an audience, I think that you it's your obligation to the audience to, you know, see this story through, number one. I mean, God forbid, unless something happened, like, you know, health crisis, family crisis. I understand if, you know, story goes on hiatus or something like that. But to, like, to lower your audience in and then reboot it midway through, I, that, I, I really don't like that. Um I would say you should have the you should have everything like really you should have your basic gist of your story already like locked down before you even put it out there for public consumption. That's just my opinion. I'm not gonna criticize anybody here if they choose to do it. But I mean if you're putting out, you know, a story, a series, this is your product, this is your your brand, this is your name attached to it. You, I, it's a certain level of pride and also you wanna be good to your audience because, you know, people taking the time to read your product that that's a big thing and you don't want you know, like betray your readers by 
10 issues in, oh, okay, I'm going to reboot this or whatever. And I, I don't know. So not um, something I would do. I, I say that. <laughs> uh, okay. The, uh, what was it? Uh, something else you mentioned there that, uh, darn, I lost that thought already. Wait, what was well, it? <laughs> Yeah, there was some. There was something you mentioned, all, and that, that I really wanted to touch on it, but it's gonna come back to me. But I guess <laughs> no I'm, uh, I guess I'll come back to it. But the um, I was actually curious. Uh, your pen name, Starlight City Project. Uh, what, yeah. Uh, what made you come up with that name? Um. Well, Starlight City is the name of my my publishing company. Uh, Starlight City Entertainment. That's number one. But actually, Park. Starlight City is like one of the the locations, like the main locations in in R. L. Bursana. Hey, and, hey, real quick, not to cut you off, Nico, fix your camera. Yes, yeah. I can't see. We can't see you. Because <laughs> you somehow it's your camera changed off. angle or whatever. Wait. And the way I had it set, it was. I I literally didn't change anything. Hold it's on, let the me same see. as, and it's on on my end. Oh, okay, my fault. That was me. Never mind. Sorry. Cont- carry on. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Where were we? Where were we? Uh. You were. Uh, yeah. You said the uh, the, the Starlight City, City the name of the. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Starlight City is basically one of the the locations in the series. Um. Mm-hmm. And one day I was just like reading like do stuff. I don't know where what I was reading. It was like a. I think it was like a adaptation of like a, a manga adaptation of like some kind of novel sci-fi novel and the author he um he basically his uh his pen name was basically i think it was like the title of the series or something like that and then you know project after it and also i kept seeing like different animes having like okay um the title of the series and project like they're their production team name was the you know the name of the series and the word project so i was just like i'll just call you know make my pen name starlight city project and then that was it so i may even change my pen name on the next series i don't know i don't it, the pen name is not anything that's really that important to me like because as as people who have met me at uh conventions and stuff will tell you mm. they come up to me i say hey, you know call me sean my name's sean like and you know i tell them i go by the pen name starlight city project but you know, it, it's not that big of a deal, but I just wanted to like write it under a pen name. No particular big reason or anything. You should come to Yomacon. <laughs> Where's that one at? It's in Michigan. That's like our biggest con. It's in Detroit. It's in uh. Oh, know. what uh, what 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 time of year is it? Uh, usually in October, like they do it for like Halloween, kind of. Which is kind of kind of why it's called Yomacon. No, like, you know, so. Yoma meaning demon, and then con, like demon con. Have you uh? Have you guys um, gotten the table there uh, in the Ooh, past? Or don't even. T- it's so hard to get a table up in there, man. I'm like, I can tell you <laughs> stories about trying to get a table up in there. You know, like where I almost did, and then you know I did something, and then it didn't happen, and then you know, like you have to basically yeah, the- be on it. Like as soon as they make it available, yeah. we managed to get a yeah. pass. That's it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, when space fills up at these conventions, yeah, you gotta. <laughs> You got to jump on it. Trust me, I know. Oh, man. Um, I filled up in less than five minutes. I'm not even kidding you. Yeah, you literally did. Literally, as soon as it was announced, probably five minutes in, they were locked down. I know we were not even kidding you. Yeah, the bigger conventions, man, it, it's so tough. Like, I'm I, I'm actually located in New Jersey, so, like, the biggest convention in our area is, you know, New York Comic Con. Mm-hmm. But You got that, that no. real big one. Yeah, and to get a you know artist alley table for that, you gotta you gotta really jump on that one. Um, you gotta jump on that. Uh, <laughs> last year was my first year actually doing conventions because I actually started putting out uh, RL persona in June of 2015. So last year was the first set of conventions I did. I did one in uh, Newark, New Jersey, and then I did New Jersey Comic Expo. Um, that was in November, so I'm going to be doing uh, a few other, a few shows this year. I just got to get the calendar straight and the space is locked down, then I'll start announcing that stuff. But I definitely want to get out of state, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, same here. 
same here. You know? Definitely, because there's so many con- conventions, and you want to like you know spread the stuff. Because the internet can only mm-hmm. take you so far. If, uh, trust me, like putting out your own comic face to face, that it, it nothing beats that. Especially selling your own comic face to face with people who like take an interest. That nothing beats that, man. I'm telling you. Have you? <laughs> you met- guys, trust me. Have you met like um, any people like I guess that maybe do put publish things on the internet in person before? Like, have you know like is there anybody that have been at any of these conventions that uh, you've encountered? Just out of curiosity. As far as like web comic goes, or yeah. just like uh, people, um, I haven't met anybody um, like another web comic creator. Yeah, I've met other uh, creators like. Uh, James Roach, uh, he's uh, the creator of this comic called Wretches. He actually ran two Kickstarters. It's not, it's not a web comic, but it's a comic that's published independently. Mm-hmm. Uh, I met him because I uh, networked with him on the internet. Um, but as far as other web comic creators, I haven't had the chance to meet them yet. But I'm pretty sure I'll run across them, you know, sooner than later. Oh yeah, especially if you, you know, you're spreading out, you, you know, spreading your wings. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, like with the the whole webcomic thing, because um, I actually wasn't going to, I had no idea about webcomics, you know, two years ago. I mean, I knew about them, but I, I didn't ever plan on releasing RL Persona as a webcomic. I was going to do, you know, straight up comic. And then, you know, one day I was thinking, I was like, what's the fastest and easiest way to really get, build up a fan base? And then I started researching and then there was like webcomics and I'm like, Okay, and then, so basically since June, how I publish it, I publish it uh, every web- Wednesday um, at 12 a.m. On, on my website, ilpersona.com. And um, basically, it's like maybe a page or two a week. And then, you know, it, it, traffic was slow at first because no one knows you, you know, but just consistently putting it out there and, you know, marketing on social media uh doing advertisements through google adwords you know we're just slowly building an audience so if anybody you know is out there and they want to you know put out a comic but they don't know how to build a fan base i'm telling you web comics is the way to go Uh, sometimes you have to give things away um in order to get people to follow you because it's it's very hard to put out a comic and no one knows who you are and expect people to pay for it but at the end of the day, where you get your money is through conventioning. Um, and I'm just giving away little things that I've, I've, I've learned uh, over the past 24 months. Um, you know, advertisement space on your website. Mm. Um, <clears throat> merchandise, obviously, you want, you want to make shirts and stuff for your characters and stuff like that. Definitely try that. Um uh what else uh, obviously selling books on amazon comiXology make sure your books get out there i mean it's not the fastest way obviously if you don't have like a big market share like marvel disney or something like that but people buy if they like it they'll support you and people have supported so that uh, i'm just grateful for that and um yeah i mean it, it it's definitely a lot of different ways to, to go as far as the whole web comic aspect but it's definitely an avenue I, I definitely recommend I think a lot of people probably out there probably, you know, are liking to hear this, you know, whether it's, you know, I mean, oh, God, I'm no, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, like I said, it's not easy to, to it's not easy. It, you have to be consistent with your product. That's why one thing I would say to anybody that wants to start a web comic series, number one, make sure before you do it, um, you have enough content to where you're you're not, you know, um, because in, in, in the web comics, I want to call it industry, but people have buffers of content. Like you, if you're publishing a page or two a week, right. You want to have enough to like really draw people in. You don't want to like publish like three weeks worth of stuff. And then you have to take a break for like two months because you got to, you know, make more pages. So you definitely want to start when you have enough built up, like, when I started putting RL Persona on, on the internet as a webcomic, we had about almost two volumes worth of stuff done already. So, like, I've got stuff just, like, you know, sitting around, and we're, we're currently working. We're, like, 75% of 
done with the third volume. I've got the fourth volume already written, ready to go, and then I'm currently writing the fifth. So just make sure you got a lot of you got a lot of content to be consistent because mm. consistency is the key in anything that you do, and especially like building an audience. If you're not consistent, people are gonna lose. They're gonna lose focus. They're gonna go elsewhere. So that's my main thing to tell anybody: just be consistent. I agree with those words quite a bit. <laughs> the um, so uh, just a few more, just a few more questions uh, running sure. on here as we uh run a really low on time. Um, I, I don't, I don't want to hold you up or anything either. Uh, but, it's, uh, a it's a pleasure to talk to you guys. Oh, thanks, oh, thanks. Thanks. The uh, uh, first, so first off, because uh, I, I was really curious about this. I know we, I know earlier we we asked you about uh, if you had any inspirations from real from your real life, uh, mm -hmm. or uh, your uh, your life in general. But uh, more specifically, uh, are there are there any aspects of uh, your past experiences that that were um, past experiences uh it, you know in, in your life in general whether it was the characteristics a situation or a uh, type of um uh, uh issue or something that had that occurred in the past anything in the past that was somewhat incorporated in the current story uh rl persona well i would say it's nothing specific um all the characters uh i wouldn't say the entire the story itself, um, I would say that the characters themselves are about 75% me as the writer, obviously, because you're writing the voice, so all characters are like an aspect of yourself one way or another. Sometimes characters make you see different parts of yourself that you didn't know was there either. And um, But they're also based on like people that I've met in passing, you know, in life in general. Um, as far as the situations and stuff in the series goes, I wouldn't say it's based. It could be influenced by you know life in general, but I wouldn't say like. I wouldn't say it's like directly influenced by any events or anything like that, like car accidents or anything like that. Um, yeah, I will but... say that the the point of a, a young man. Um, waking up in the middle of a life that he doesn't understand or something like that i could say that's probably that could be based on like i think some of my transitions into adulthood to put it like you know to, to put it briefly i guess no uh, yeah i hope it wasn't um too personal me asking i uh oh, oh. what the <laughs> yeah like it's the main the main thing i really did want to get out of is because um uh, yeah, the com common case in uh, any, I mean, any of the stories at least that I've read or anything, yeah. you know, you get you tend to get an idea uh, of a uh, of a uh, of someone's personality or certain things that uh that may have been going on through through their mind or their mind or something that might happen to them or just their character all around. So um, I mean, even uh, even Irvin over here, you know, you did you, you can see a lot of his character and his main character. So. Oh, Mary. <laughs> I would uh, like as far as Raid, the main character goes. I, he's he's borrowed from a lot of different people. Put it like that. He uh, certain aspects of when I was young and dumber, I suppose, and uh, just in general, just he, he's like a mismatch of a lot of people. Like some people, a lot of people do ask if like the main character is like based off of me. I'm like, no, totally different people. <laughs> Quick question: is, Yeah, what what is Raid's ethnicity? He is, oh, I get he's black. Cause if you, um, I was thinking so. I wasn't sure though. I was like, let me, well, like, people have asked, and sometimes I like to be ambiguous, just to, well, what do you perceive it as? You know, mm -hmm. I like, but he, he definitely, he basically, cause I, I'm, I'm black, I'm African American, I'm with Caribbean roots and stuff like that. But the one thing that I did give him that's from me is my skin tone. Got that so. Melanin. Yeah, so if he if you wanted if you wanted to ask me, I would say yeah, he's black. You know, what I did with his his character design, um, it changed a little bit through the years. Um, as you know, it was developed because he was originally 
like I, I wrote the idea of the story about him and everything, and then one of my old friends he drew like a picture of him, and that's like kind of what I based it on. He looks totally different from the old picture from back in the day, but um, I wanted to give him like a kind of a look. I wanted him to look like an anime character, but it was important to me to make him, you know, like a man of color. Um, and and you know, just so people could see. Uh, a person of color as like a main character in the series and there's no stereotypes involved and things like that you know it, this is just his story it you know bare bones and um yeah i like he doesn't you know necessarily look for like the uh like, i guess like the typical like black character that you ever you see in every <laughs> single story too because i think a lot of times and yeah. I, I even see this kind of like in the webcomic community a lot of times when people make a black character i feel <laughs> like they always have to have dreads and there's anything wrong with that but like they always need to have dreads or a fro and i'm like and if you don't have that then people will act as if it's you know not black enough and, and then people won't mm -hmm. outwardly say it all the time but the only reason why i'm mentioning this is because i feel like that's happened a little bit with one of my own characters ah uh, okay perceive her as necessarily black now it wasn't amongst like fans mm -hmm. or anything like that but some people were like huh it it, it can happen. It can happen um, because everyone has preconceived notions of, 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 you know, what black is in the first place. When in reality, black can mean several different things. You know, and if you look at like especially Africa, it's people's it's, appearances, huh? If, and I was gonna say like if you look at like Africa, like you think about everything came from Africa. So and there's so many different types of you know black people in Africa. Like no one is set in like one set form like the people that have you know dreads people have mm -hmm. afros or people have straight hair i mean they have light skin red skin dark skin high yellow skin i mean that's why you know i wanted to raise appearance I, I gave him my skin color and his appearance i was actually inspired by a movie called summer wars i don't know if you've ever seen oh, it oh yeah i've seen that movie yeah one of the characters in there i was like yo like he, it kind of his his look kind of inspired like the long hair, like when Ray doesn't have his helmet on, like he's got long hair and stuff like that. That kind of inspired me, but that like character that helmet, was also. Like... Thank you, thank you. Yeah, like, it reminded me like when I saw you take it off. I'm like, I don't know, it reminded me of, like some some Iron Man type stuff, but at the same time sweeter mm -hmm. because of how you know how you had to take it off, but you know. <laughs> and um, but that character that inspired. A little bit of his appearance. He was also, uh, he, hold on one second. I'm sorry. Uh, he he was a character of color. So I was just like, yo, I was like, I want to. I like I was always writing open no something, but it never that part wasn't the main focus for me. Um, because the main focus to me, I just want to tell my story, tell it in a good way, and hope that people like it. But you know, um, as I started like reading more things and you know seeing how things are. I just wanted to to really make a series, especially a successful one that that is featuring like a man of color as uh, the lead character. It not even has to be a man, but just a person of color in general. So. Okay. All right, and um, I guess um, the I was cute. I was also curious about uh. Your, I mean, your thoughts on your thoughts really on the current state of the manga industry, and to be more specific, mm -hmm. uh, well, more specific and still broad in a sense. The, uh, I mean, it, it, what it, the with the industry, there's a lot of uh, interesting things going on. You're, even even though uh, even though manga is 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 definitely a lot more pop popular in this day and age, and uh, and as he as that can be heavily thanks thanks to a lot of the anime that basically made its way internationally but um mm -hmm. there are some of the, some interesting things are going on we're seeing uh, a lot of a lot of um you know indie a lot of indie companies and indie solo um writers and I mean, authors and artists uh going uh, going out here making series or making uh com companies trying to basically get uh, their mangas uh, up and going, and um, mm -hmm. it, in Japan itself, we're we're, we're seeing uh, it by by interesting with Japan. I I mean it in the sense that 
the the um the Japanese are like revamping everything to my they're cutting a lot of the story. We're we're seeing now. we're seeing yes, a lot of a lot of uh, series being conveniently some old time series conveniently being cut around the same period. Uh, ah, seeing, uh, yeah, yeah. A lot of seeing a lot of new new stuff trying to trying to come in and um or they're trying to basically push a lot of uh, new stuff to basically come in. We're seeing, you know, some interesting things just happen all around and also hearing a lot of nightmare cases of uh of their own um you know the art uh, oh my god because really not really want to work for you know something like jump so yeah. what, what are you what are your thoughts on things going on right now in the manga industry well i think it's i think it's definitely changing over there um i don't know if it's for the better i mean they they have a business model that they're trying to follow or revamp a little bit um I, I do notice that the the main popular ones um from years past are all you know they've either ended or they're dwindling down um i think one piece is like the only like big name one from the past like what 15 years it's still mm. still like, up and running up. um y- yeah well i mean <laughs> who knows when that story will end but um but I, I do notice that there there seems to be some kind of change going on in their industry over there. Where because I mean there was like a series that I forgot what it was called, uh, uh, Demons Plan or something. It w- it was relatively new. It only lasted like ten chapters, and it got the axe. And I'm mm-hmm. like, that's really odd. I I don't remember the last time I saw a series like get the axe that fast, but. You know, it, it's based off of popularity over there, and they could be changing the way that they're really measuring how popular a series is. So, I mean, personally, I, I'm not really a fan of a lot of the new stuff that, that's come out recently. Like, like, like I, I'm real big on Tokyo Ghoul. I think, I think the writing is, like, phenomenal in that series. Um, but otherwise, like, unless somebody, you know, unless I get put onto something new, I, I haven't really been too you know um enamored with a lot of the stuff that i'm seeing lately uh f- from like jump and things like that um you know it's all subjective everybody's got their own opinions but yeah i'm not it's not like how it used to be you know you had your three big series uh like one piece bleach naruto and stuff like that you'd have hunter hunter jumping in every now and then whenever the author <laughs> whenever the author like you know decides to you know start making it again um <laughs> and then you had series here and there, but I mean, otherwise, like now it's like I'm not really, not really checking for anything too particular, especially out of like Shonen Jump or whatever. You like I, I don't know. Uh, I jump in on that every now and then. That series runs so long that I, I just sometimes will just let chapters pile up, and then I'll you know try to catch up. But I, I do mm-hmm. like the series though. Um, oh. There's a there's a boxing series that's out now that's actually pretty good. Uh, I can't remember the name of it though. The the protagonist he's got like white hair, and it's, it's kind of a little bit more edgier than than Hajime no Ippo. Um, jeez, I can't remember the name of it though. It, it's a it's a, it's a fairly new boxing series though. I know I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> trying to see if i can remember the name but i mean yeah otherwise i mean uh it, yeah it, manga is kind of i mean even with anime certain things don't really capture my attention i think they're shifting the market um to be honest with you towards whatever's gonna make well obviously it's all about making money but i think that all the stories and the the series are they're shifting towards uh what could get the the widest audience and you definitely want to like from business aspect they they probably want the female readers as much as the male if not more nowadays because females are definitely becoming like a definitely a driving driving force in like all like industry like as far as like comics and manga and anime goes so they, they definitely want that audience so i think that they may be gearing more things to make sure that they they capture the female readers as well the as the males so that could also ex, you know explain why the shift is why, why things are a little bit different you know and it's understandable um 
because like I said, it, it is about money. At the end of the day, they they have a they have they got their bottom line. So yeah, I also think um, is too though. That I agree totally. Like, you look at back in the day, you could put you could put it out for everybody, but I'm not gonna read it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like you gotta have some substance behind it. You know, you look at a lot of the you know the, the great mangakas from you know way back whenever that, that paved the way that they made. You know, they they really you know put their blood, sweat, and tears into something. Like I seen yeah. some post or something where, well, I, I know I showed it to you, Nico, uh, where it was a uh, uh, Osamu Tezuka. And this dude was like, I have to do 31 pages by tomorrow oh, yeah. or something. And I was like, I don't even know how that's possible, to be honest with you. Like, I was like, there's no way. Like, you wouldn't even be able to get that done. I don't, I don't even know if he there got was... it done. But, like, it was, I don't know if somebody had just. Probably did. That's just, he to probably me, did. I, don't, I don't see how. Because I'm like. I mean, Different that's generation, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, the boxing series I was talking about is called Rikudo. Rikudo. <laughs> I I've seen that pop up. I just never looked at it. Yeah, that one. It it it, it starts. It's really dark though, so it's not like it's yeah, nothing like Ippo. Or, yeah, trust me. It, it's it's more of a, a mature audiences read, I guess. Oh, um, you know what the uh, the one thing that really caught my attention that I do check for is this story. It's this story called uh, "Promise Neverland." I think it's running Shonen Jump right now. But mm -hmm. that's a good one if you want to check that out. It's like a real mystery type story. Yeah, I've seen okay. that pop up. I haven't read that one either, though. But I know what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, I'm uh, I gotta catch up on yeah, my songs. I think shows. the writing, the writing. I'm I'm always big into the writing, even more so than the art. So that story in particular, that that really caught my attention. So that one I keep up with out of the new stuff nowadays. But Do you look at Shokugeki no Sama. Hmm. Not yet. I haven't gotten into it. Okay, like you never watched it, or you just did what your thing. I I never watched it. Oh, okay, all right. I would definitely recommend reading it and watching it. Like there, it's it's good. Like you know, if you wanna, if you like anything dealing with like cooking or whatever, it's almost like watching like Iron Chef, but in like. What's know, the like, English name of that? What's the English name of that? Uh, um, food Wars. I think I know what you're talking about. Food Wars, yeah. right? Yeah. I all right. I read like uh, two chapters of that. I it it, it looked interesting. But I was never into like food mangas, so. Oh, okay. I see. But I, I mean, it looks interesting. I'd probably have to give it a shot. But they have an anime for it, right? Yeah, they do. I, I'll yeah. check it out sometime. If it's on Crunchyroll, I'll probably check it out because oh, I, yeah, I look. Fun. Yeah, that's my go-to right there. Crunchyroll, try to find new stuff. So. Crunchyroll brought to you by Crunchyroll. Say no. It wasn't brought to you by Crunchyroll. I don't want to get sued. Say no. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we're just giving them free advertisement anyway, just by talking about them. So I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nico, did you have any other questions? Uh, well, no, that's actually wrapping up the questions there. I mean, uh, outside of outside of that, uh, if you want to close out any uh, aspiring youngins out there, you know, you can give them a, a motivational line of encouragement. Oh, um. Uh, don't listen to anybody who's negative and uh, don't quit at what you're doing. I mean, that's pretty much it, especially not listening to negative people. So like, what if somebody's be doing drugs and people are telling them, hey, you know, you need to stop doing that. And they're like, I'm not going to listen to you being negative because I want to do this. I'm going to shoot up. Well, that's, that's to be self-destructive is a, <laughs> that's a personal choice. I mean... <laughs> I'm talking about being a little bit more uh, productive, you know. <laughs> but, you know, just as far as, like, doing what you want to do, you know, like, don't listen to anybody as far as, I mean, take advice, but as far as uh, something negative, like, yo, you can't do this or whatever, um, you got to put that to the side, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure. Criticism. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go oh, ahead. Oh, no, no, I didn't know you were still going. I'll, I'll let you keep going. Oh, no, I was just going to say, like, you know, take criticism for what it is, you know. Like, criticism is good as long as it's constructive, but if someone's just trying to tear you down, don't even, don't even bother with it. Oh, yeah, certainly. Thank I agree. You. I agree with you with that, you know. I mean, people will try to tear you down. People will try to, you know, make you believe you can't do it or anything. So, you know, hmm. certainly. You got to be like Raid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you want to be like him. We'll, we'll see. Story's still uh, young right now. 
<laughs> All right. Well, yeah. it's been a pleasure. Thank you, everybody, for watching this stream. Um, you might be watching it. If you're watching it on Twitch, thanks for watching. And if you're watching this on Facebook as a recording, then thank you for watching. Um, I'll make sure to link down uh, below um, Sean's uh, you know, webcomic, um, RL Persona. So you can definitely check it out. It's good. I, I, mean, I promise you that. I've read through it myself. So anyway, um, is there any other story or anything? Or you already told us that you had, you know, you're working on your other story. So make sure you look out for that as well. And, um, you know, we'll be updating you soon with, uh, you know, um, the next uh, uh, interview that we'll be putting out soon with the next uh, great creator. So I have to thank him again for coming on uh, Shining, uh, Shining Spotlight. Yes. Thank, thank you, you thank again. You. With that, everyone. Thank you, guys. Catch you all later.